Hi, everyone, and welcome to Heal Endometriosis Naturally with Wendy K. Laidlaw. Wendy has spent the last two years helping women with various stages of endometriosis to heal naturally after putting her condition into remission. After her own healing success from stage four endometriosis and adenomyosis, she's inspired to heal others, and her goal is to help some of the 175 million women know that there is another way other than painkillers, drugs, or surgery. This is the place to be for real talk with real people for real results so you can learn how to heal your endometriosis naturally. Please note that the opinions expressed in this program may represent options but are not a substitute for proper medical care. Before starting any new healthcare program, we recommend you consult with a health professional. I hope that this finds you well as always and there's always so much going on in the world that I think We are all incredibly sensitive and perceptive people. So it's really important uh, now than at any other time to really make sure that we are paying attention to how our bodies are responding to the stimuli and everything that's out there in the world. So, for example, you know, please, as always, make sure that you are aware of what's on in the radio in the background. You know, is your phone switched off until you've done your journaling in the morning or you're not getting disturbed and like overstimulated by people and places and things? that you, know, you really don't want to be uh, doing uh, setting up your day in, in that way. So um, so as we're moving into this week, we are going to be um, talking about going into the advanced kind of feel it state. Um, if you've gone through the whole essence of being an endable is really coming to terms with the fact that we are feeling beings above all things. Now that poses two, two challenges. One is that A, we've got like like twin sisters, we've got the immune system and the nervous system. We've got other systems as well, obviously. But the immune system and nervous system in particular, they're like twin sisters. If our nervous system is constantly in this fight, flight, freeze, fold uh, situation, then our and then our immune system is impaired and is struggling to do what it needs to do to clean up what's happening inside your body. Now, invariably, our nervous system is wired and that's why it took it took me a long time with the chronic fatigue and the mitochondria dysfunction and obviously the endometriosis and adenomyosis and the cysts and the thyroid you name it I had everything I had to really work hard on feeling it and this is why this front uh, this front end section is really really important to you you're going to have massive resistance if you've resisted the journaling throughout you know that it's it probably means that you need it more than anyone um i know i was the same it was something that i really struggled with personally from my own experience i'd had a mother who had uh taken my journal read it uh, which was a private journal to me and then so read out loud and mocked me about it so you can imagine the resistance i had to journaling when it was first suggested to me um now even if you put the word journaling to one side and just assume that this is you keeping a record, a track record of your progress, of your journey, so that when you do get what you need to get the endometriosis and remission and you do feel in a stronger place, that you actually have a track record. Over the past um, couple of weeks, it's, it's been a bit turbulent um, in, in my life. I've had a lot of, lot of, I've had grief, I've had disappointment, let down, I've had a whole range of emotional um situations and things occur and of course I think we're, it's very easy for us when these situations occur is to immediately beat ourselves up and say I shouldn't feel this way and I should be feeling this way and we shoot all over ourselves but what I did is I actually went back through my old journals I went back two years last night and I was suddenly kind of like wow I hadn't quite realized how far I'd grown now I've been journaling now probably for about five years. But when I go back even to my earliest journals, I can tell that I'm filtering what I'm writing. I can tell that I'm nervous about writing things down. I'm scared that what I write down is going to be used against me. So it's really interesting to see from uh, whenever that was, uh, 2014 to even 2018, which I'm reading last night, and to where I am now. And had I not had that, it'd be so hard to track the growth and track the, um, the the progression emotionally. And this is why emotions is the thing that we fear the most because uh, twofold, we, 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 there's, I think there's like five different states you can have. There's the, obviously the death feeling state, there's the annihilation, and then there's the shame of, you know, shame and humiliation. And then there's the not 
fitting in and then there's kind of like the, the mutilation type thing so there's all these feeling states that we can have uh, which which are wrapped up in a bundle of fear now when we're on this journey uh, we'll have a very strong and very very strong that's why you're here you've got very strong left brain very analytically minded which is trying to kind of logically um make sense of what's going on which is brilliant you know we love that part and, and you'll know by now again very integral in my journey so this is why i share these things if it's not relevant to you and it doesn't relate to you then that's fine but equally try and be mindful that if you have resistance to something it's probably because there has been a, a big barrier to it and it probably because it, it's fearful to you and there's a part of you it's like well what does that mean so for example I had a huge perfectionist part. I mean, gigantic. Um, I still have to be very mindful of that part now. I'll never lose that part. We don't want to lose any parts. But what we need to do is bring them into balance. Now, this perfectionist, for example, you know, when things go wrong or things are upsetting, um, that's my default mechanism. And I've had to learn, and I can see by going even through my journals and going back through through the, the writings that I've done at times when I've been really upset, um, how not only do I have the upset and the feelings associated with that, but then I then have this, this other part that comes in and judges the upset. And this is what we have to keep increasing our awareness of. And if, and if it's something that is still a challenge for you, that's okay. You know, it's going to get easier because when we can notice what's happening inside of us, without the judgment, without the criticism, without the, the bludgeoning that can sometimes we can do to ourselves, we then strengthen not only our nervous system, but our immune system at the same time. It's that simple. And it's, it's really hard, isn't it, for, for, for our left part of our brain to comprehend. I'm sitting on a yoga ball at the moment. So um, for, forgive me if I'm bouncing up and down. But um, it's hard for our left brain, our analytical brain, to go, yeah, yeah, but, but that's just you know that's just nonsense I don't want to want to think about feelings feelings are 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 kind of annoying I don't, for, for me feelings were an irritation when people would say feel the feelings I'm like I don't even know what that means what does that mean to feel the feelings so this is why we're going to keep continuing to talk about these things so why the phase we have to really parent ourselves perhaps for the first time this is where we're we're, we're trying a to identify through the act of getting it out of our head and onto paper as to kind of what might be going on within ourselves. I read an interesting article yesterday that um, was uh, an interesting study that was that was saying, and I'll quote more on this next week, that um, we have our, our conscious mind and then we have our subconscious mind. And the way that our subconscious works, we've got the brain stem that goes right down the back, the spine, and then branches, the nerve endings branching out. That this, this, um, this paper suggested that our body is our subconscious. So we, our mind is our conscious and our body is our subconscious. And what is subconsciously being suppressed in our body shows up as pain and symptoms, which kind of blew my mind. And, um, and, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm sharing this with you because you're at a point in your journey where there, is, there are parts of you that are here. There are parts of you that still want to keep moving forward, that still want to, to get well naturally. But yet there's naturally resistance parts. There are strong protective parts that are, are confused about what that means and how to go about that. So this is why I'm passionate about what it is that I do and, and try and do so with great love and respect and admiration for where you're at. The very fact that you're here and you're still taking care of yourself, you're still investing in yourself, you're still actively trying to find answers says a lot at the core of who you are at the same time we do need to watch our perfectionist our perfectionist part wants everything kind of to be perfect and this is where as we move through we're learning to observe different tendencies to just notice what different parts have to say and think so that we can allow the emergence of new parts in particular the parenting part it's to represent the wisdom and the wise years and the knowledge and, and perhaps the caring and the loving that we didn't get growing up. So what we're looking to do is to imagine if we were this wise granny or this, this wise parent that is all loving and kind, 
what would she be saying to us in our head when these other parts take over? Now, I'm not sure where you're at on this kind of journey because some people are a bit like, oh, that's just a bit nonsense, this whole part work. For me, it made sense because I realized that I had, so for example, the past couple of weeks, there's been all sorts of things going on in my life. And I'm aware of the old default tendencies, but they're so well-worn as in they're almost disappeared now, but they're, they were so well-worn before I didn't even have the awareness to observe them. Now I can observe them. It doesn't necessarily mean to say that I like some of the things that are happening, but I can observe them. And then I have a choice as I, whether I um, fall into that, that belief pattern or into that thought process, or I choose just to be the observer of it, like a parent, like this loving parent. I can go, ooh, that's interesting that I'm feeling really angry and rageful at that particular thing and oh that's interesting that there's a, there's this other part of me going oh well we, we shouldn't think like that or we shouldn't feel that way and this we're looking to do is to recognize that our body is a byproduct of what's come in on and around it we can kind of get i think everybody gets the food i.e the produce like from the five p's the products the property pass and people but what a lot of people really struggle with is that the body, you know, when I talk about the body um, being the subconscious, it still blows my mind, that our body is our subconscious. If it's showing up any signs or any symptoms or any form of pain, then it's, it's a distraction to what is happening emotionally deep down. And we uh, in our cultures in the West um, uh, struggle with how to recognize and acknowledge and accept feelings. That's why um, as I continue in my work, uh, a lot of my work is going a lot deeper into the feeling states and into the emotional states and to how to, to, to break it down into real simple segments so that the parts of us that are frightened, that are scared, um, that are very kind of left brain linear thinking um, can maybe just slowly open up to the concept that there might be a lot of hurt and a lot of pain going on inside the body. And in fact, this, this article talked about how um, in, in many cases, when there's unexplained pain or symptoms and things going on, it's suppressed subconscious anger and rage and fear of abandonment, which I thought was really interesting because I'd actually thought the other day, I said, oh, sometimes I just feel really angry. And and I'm, I'm comfortable with that emotional state now, but I know for over 50 years, I wasn't. The idea of having anger or rage or resentment or any of those uh, unpleasant feelings was something that I shun away from and ran away from. Now I'm learning, okay, so even if I get a pain in my elbow or there's something on in my body, what is it that I'm trying to, what is it I'm in denial about? What is it that I'm trying to run away from? So I'm going to in encourage you again, you know, to come back to putting on paper and, and putting the ink on paper is the key element. So not only you can, uh, track your your progress and see how far you've come but also just become the 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 curious observer of what's happening for you and to notice the different parts because we all have all these different parts but what are their names to you where do they originate from um they all have their different personalities and why is there that judgment because there's normally roots to um if there's an avoidance towards particular emotional states, it's because you were conditioned very early on not to have those feeling states, or it was it was conditioned or thought to be bad in inverted commas. But you probably recognize by now there are no bad emotional states. Uh, there might be uncomfortable ones, um, but then when you disown from the uncomfortable ones, sadly, invariably, you also disown from the pleasant and comfortable ones. And this is, again, as part of the journey, as part of where you're at in your journey. Um, if there's resistance to paying attention to these things, then we need to need to parent ourselves even more. Like, like a child who doesn't want to eat vegetables. You know, we all have that part in us that's kind of like, I don't want to do that. I don't like that. So this is where I'm going to implore you to use your right brain creativity and say, right, what parts can you bring into play? Now, most of us have got a very strong critic, a critic that says, you know, you must do this and you must do that and you've got this wrong and you should be doing this. Very few of us are comfortable with 
anger, with rage, anger, and resentment. And most of us then, as a result of suppressing our feelings, end up feeling really sad and down and depressed because we numb ourselves to our feeling states. So what we're looking to do is to, for a lot for that reconnection, as you know by now, um, there's a lot of different ways we can do that. Uh, one of them, of course, is to write in the morning as you wake up. And the reason that you do that is, you know by now, is because your really vulnerable part of you, really super scared, frightened parts, who are super scared in the morning, who first wake up really vulnerable, we haven't put our masks in place, we haven't put our professional persona on. That is when we tap into what's happening deep down in our subconscious. Because what we're looking to, we're looking to get to is this kind of joyful state. I know that when eventually we, we move past the resistance and the, the struggle and, and the conflict that invariably is working on in our parts, then um, it's beautiful to see the women actually, and I know myself, I can actually experience the, the pleasant feelings now, like bliss, like serenity, like tranquility, like like happiness and joy, all those little things like that that I that I couldn't do before because I was so um, scared of what my feeling states were, and I felt everything had to be in a certain way. But what I'm going to be encouraging you to do still is to work on what I refer to as little you. There is a frightened little part of you in there that is all feeling state. So that's when you feel emotions, whether it be around different people or you feel it in your chest, your throat, your jaw, you might feel in your neck, head and shoulders or your stomach. Invariably, women with endometriosis, they, they shove down, down into the abdomen. They call it the second, um, the second um, heart down in the uterus. Any emotional states that haven't been able to be, have words um, put upon them. So perhaps when you were little, that there was situations occurred that again you you were they say give me a child to the age of seven and I'll show you the man or the woman. We we walk around in almost a pre-hypnotic state up to the for the first seven years of our life. So what we're looking to do is really again with our new parent um kind of almost understand that our different parts have different needs. And invariably it's our younger parts, our more frightened parts, you know, the parts of us that are like super, super scared that we tend to switch off from, numb out from and ignore. And then that's where you get layer upon layer upon layer about all these different feelings. And these different feeling states show up in different ways and manifest themselves through pain and suffering uh, uh, mentally, emotionally, and physically. So this is where through, um, through meditation as well, or mindfulness, or even just the deep breathing exercises that you're going, I'm going to be encouraging you just to almost have a, a conversation particularly with your younger part. So it would be, um, I remember doing this exercise and I found it quite emotional, but also helped me develop compassion for different parts of myself. I had this very strong perfectionist part, very strong pusher part, very strong critic, very strong people pleaser. Um, I had all the strong parts, which I still have, but they are now not as dominant and I'm allow, I allow other parts to come up. But this younger part, tends to get ignored quite early on because once you, as you start to grow, whether it be into to adolescence, you know, when you start to get older, you learn it's not safe for you to show your feelings. And this is why your feelings get buried and they get layer upon layer. And you're literally a, a living hell of feelings that are so that, that buried down so deep that it's hard and, 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 and intangible to, to get hold of. So I'm going to be encouraging you this week in particular to, to really engage, I say engage, to become curious and just notice um, the different parts of you some more, but also to see if you can listen and hear what the need is of a younger you. Now, you may it may show up as a feeling state. It may show up as, a, as, a, as an image. It may show up as something that isn't even a word. So the idea of this exercise is to enable you to, to uh, sort of open up the, the brain even more to connect left, to bridge over from the left to the right side. And again, this was something that was a huge challenge for me. Here we go. Um, it's called The Recovery of the Inner Child. Now, this book, 
um, was very, very helpful to me. As I say, I used to struggle to write words on in my journal. I was scared that I would be judged if anybody read it. I wasn't quite sure if I was doing it the right way or what I was supposed to be doing. I had a lot of resistance to putting thoughts and feelings on paper. And, and what helped me was to be able to actually um, understand that sometimes we just need to actually write out or draw out a, a doodle or an image or, or something that can help us understand kind of what's going on. One of my earlier drawings, I mean, this is a, such a sweet little drawing here. It says, let me out so I can be creative and heal you. And, and, and it still gives me goosebumps even now, the idea that there is a little you that has all those natural needs. And uh, no, I see the word natural needs. You will have learned to disown certain needs that you need naturally because it was fearful to ask for them or there was some retribution in doing so or there was a, a negative response to you learned early. I've got a puppy at the moment and she may wake up at any, any time. And I'm so acutely aware of that early conditioning, that early conditioning with her from, from the simplest thing. She is, she's like a little sponge, you know, from sitting to uh, waiting to, um, to going into her, into her bed. Um, and, and I was trying to teach her earlier about uh, going to fetch and come back. And I haven't quite got it right because she goes and, and fetches she goes to run for the ball, but then she doesn't bring the ball back, but she brings herself back. So I was aware of like, oh, I haven't quite got that uh, in quite right. But what I'm pointing out here is, is the conditioning is very early conditioning. Well, with all of us, we don't have a clue what that conditioning is until we find that there are signs and symptoms and illness and pain and suffering later on in life. So by now you you accept and acknowledge that um, from, from a uh, an emotional perspective, there are emotions that are trapped, that are parts that have needs that we haven't been able to tap into yet. So this is why we're doing this very gently, very carefully and very systematically. So as I say, I would encourage you to, um, to, to look at and listen to what uh, little you might be thinking. Now, if more about how we can take, pardon the pun, lots of little baby steps to this part because there is a beautiful little you inside that is feeling sad and neglected and not having her needs met. And you, you might not even begin to know um, what that need might be. Um, I will be sending out a copy of this to you because uh, again, if you have lots of resistance to it, then, then like, please let me know. Um, but what I would encourage you to do is just to, um, what, what we're, what, the reason that we're looking to recover our inner child is because if there's been so much pain and I'm talking emotional pain, mental pain, psychological pain over and above the physical pain, then we learn um, shutting off mechanisms, default mechanisms, um, protective mechanisms that can actually suppress feelings. And they could be feelings of rage. They could be feelings of anger, natural feelings of rage and anger. I mean, again, these are, natural feeling states. So I'll be encouraging you to kind of uh, explore. I'm going to be encouraging you to, to, to read it and just be open-minded to perhaps what's going on, especially if you've got physical symptoms showing up right now. And the same goes for your body. Whilst we're looking to recover your inner child and at least connect with your inner child whilst developing this inner parent, we're also looking again to keep up the dialogue or the curiosity at least of what's going on inside our body. So for example, I remember having a, going through a phase where I had, um, anytime I was in denial about something, I would get a pain in this right uh, muscle here. And I learned that if I was kind of like, oh, well, maybe she's not as bad as I think she is, I'd literally get a pain in this arm. Now it kind of, I was very cynical and very kind of poo-pooed all this. So if you're still at that point, I get it. All I ask of you is just to be curious of it and go online and, and research it. It's called the mind-body syndrome at TMS, where we're, we're really trying to connect um, to what is actually happening. And by this point, you recognize that we're not just a physical symptom. We're not just a body. We are a whole person feeling mind, body, spirit with a past who invariably has had a trauma of varying degrees, 
um, and what is trauma to one person might not be trauma to another person. But what is what is real is the pain. What is real are the symptoms. But equally, what is real is that there is a disconnect going on between the feelings, emotions and belief states and what's actually going on deep down in the subconscious. So this is why we're going to keep talking about this and we're going to keep talking comes through my programs now. It's the 21 day challenge. Embracing emotions program. And, um, and then into the academy. And then we've had uh, several people who've come through the 21 Day Challenge, gone into Embracing Emotions program and had, had their bodies completely transformed because a, the, um, I read the other day, there's a, we're, we're drowning in information, but we're starving and we're, we're scarce on knowledge. And, and this, informa- this knowledge is, is literally physically and life-changing because there's parts of you that, that know you need more knowledge about what's happening inside your body and your feelings and your emotions, yet you're drowned out with all the information that's online. Where, where do you begin? And this is why women with endometriosis in particular have, have, have like 10 degrees deeper layers of sensitivity than any other woman out there. That's why the, the, the condition has taken hold. That's why the, the immune system hasn't been able to, to remove it. Again, the body's always wanting to heal itself. That is just a biological and scientific fact. Um, what we're concerned with is what could be inhibiting that? What could be slowing that process down? And invariably, when it comes to identifying parts, identifying feelings, identifying emotions, this is where a lot of challenging um this is where a lot of challenges occur. If there's been a lot of uh, abandonment or a lot of separation, a lot of cruelness or mistreatment that has happened growing up. And as I say, we're not here to, to, to bash up anyone's parents because, um, you know, that, that's, that's, you know, that's a whole different entity. Uh, what we are here to do is to ensure that you absolutely make that connection to those younger parts or certainly that younger part in particular. Um, it, it can be very, very scary for, uh, for, for our adult parts to start to connect with the younger parts because we've, we've created such um, protective mechanisms over the years so that we can compartmentalize. We kind of like, okay, well that's, that's in the, the, the younger part of me and we've switched off from that. That was our adolescence me and we've switched off from that. Now we're adult. But what can sometimes happen is we turn up as an adult and we're barely able to function. And what we're and what we're what we're looking to do is really kind of pay attention to our, our child, our adolescence, and our adult. By the time that we're an adult, we're we're miserable because we've suppressed our adolescence and we've suppressed our our child's needs. And then we are dom- dominated by the perfectionist, the people pleaser, the pusher, and the critic. And these the, these are awesome parts which we do not want to get rid of but they're out of balance. And in fact, I've got another illustration that I haven't printed off yet, but what we're looking to do is ultimately, um, you know, have them all connected, have them all integrated so that, and, and there'll be many other parts that, that you'll be aware of. There'll be your professional part and there'll be your um, daughter part. There'll be your aunt part. There'll be, there'll be all these different parts that you show up in different ways with different energies and different influences. But what we're really looking to do is to connect um, to that younger part of you in a really safe way, but also in a fun way, if we can, because that younger part, you know, you just need to look at children, say at six or seven, my, my daughter teaches, is a primary school teacher, and the, the, the innocence of a five or six year old or six or seven year old is is just so beautiful. There's the, there's that innocence there. There's this blank slate. There's just they're like little sponges. As I say, it's like my puppy Poppy, who is the same. She's just like a little sponge. You know, she's taking everything in, and she's so easily influenced and conditioned. And that's what's happened to us. So if we have taken on and in at a very very young age, um, perhaps the atmosphere at home or Perhaps there was a house move or a job loss or there was um, there was a, a mistreatment or there was emotional abuse or there, maybe there was physical abuse. Maybe there was alcoholism. I don't know what it was for you, but at a very small age, you can see how children respond to thunderstorms or, um, again, how they're, they're how vulnerable and susceptible they are to these idealisms that we put out there, like Santa Claus and theories. So there's that innocence and there's that uh, vulnerability 
that normally when there's a resistance to, to writing out thoughts and feelings, it's because there's a great fear of what we might uncover. But what I'm here to reassure you on is everything that lies within you is beautiful. There is no badness in there. No matter what anyone has said to you, no matter what anyone has projected onto you, there is no badness. There is an abundance of beauty and greatness and strength and connectivity and, and joyfulness and peace and serenity waiting to be connected to, which in turn will give out all this information as to kind of what and why things are happening in your body as they are. And most importantly, emotionally, because we've got all these um, different theories and, and, and different papers and different studies and different reports. We've got the um, medical machine, all, all these different this information, as I say, we're, we're drowning in information, but there's very few people that have the, the healing knowledge, the knowledge of the body and the emotions uh, of the, the understand the full person. And this is what I, I'm, I'm what, as I say, I'm so passionate about this because it's understanding the full person as you are, who you are. And you cannot sort of separate out this thing. If, if there's a pain or a sign or a symptom in your body, it, there's a reason for that. There is a root cause for that. And that's what we're going to be continuing to keep working on as we move through. Because ultimately what we're aiming for is so that you can go into relaxed state so that we can strengthen that nervous system which in turn can then strengthen our immune system. That's ultimately what we're really looking for. If we can't strengthen these things, then it's they stay in these perpetual loops and they produce cortisol. And then that competes with, that steals progestion, which then keeps increasing the hormonal imbalance. So we're looking to make sure that every afternoon without fail, we are looking to do at least 30 to perhaps 45 minutes now of relaxation, mindfulness, and meditation. It's, it's mandatory for your body. And not only for your body from a physical perspective, but also from an emotional perspective. And I would encourage you, depending on what you're, you're uh, comfortable with and, and what, what you like, but what we're looking for is, uh, is to have some routine and regularity. And this is where our inner parent comes in because we're always going to have this part of us. It's like, Oh, I don't have time. And Oh, I'm too busy. Or, Oh, I, you don't understand. We can all make excuses for ourselves, but this inner parent needs to come in and say, actually, you can't afford not to do it. You've been ill too long and we want you to get well now. And through relaxation, mindfulness, meditation, if we know that we're going to do this in the afternoon after lunch, we're going to take that time. We're going to shut our door. We're going to go and sit in the bathroom cubicle if you have to. I know some women have done that at work or go and sit in their car or turn off your phone, your doorbell, whatever you go and lie down if you can. Put headphones on, ideally a meditation that's getting you to come back into your body. You will start to get this amazing feedback and wisdom that comes from, from your body. And again, I, I get it if you're still a bit cynical about all this stuff because I was the most stubborn. Oh, that's why it took me so long. I mean, I was bedridden, totally disabled for two and a half years. You know, so if you want stubborn, I was it. I was the queen of stubborn. I resisted all this stuff. I didn't didn't want to know. I didn't understand it. It, it seemed illogical to me. I just needed. I just wanted so, uh, painkillers, uh, drugs, and surgery. That that was all I wanted. I wanted them to fix me. I didn't know that I had to. Part of me did, but part of the majority of me didn't want to even go there. Um, and that's what why we're going to keep uh, working on all these things so that you can be the end of boss with her little cloak on. Looking at this in more detail. And um, as I say, I'm going to be encouraging you to doodle. I'm going to be encouraging you to, to write and not to write. If you still have resistance to writing, then I'm just going to encourage you to put down words, even in the morning, even if it's like a a word kind of like irritated. I'm just going to encourage you just with a word or a sentence or a phrase so that you can then start this, this, this beautiful relationship with yourself so that we can really get to the core uh, of you feeling what's happening inside your body, what's feeling what's happening inside your emotions. Because remember, all emotions are messengers. You know, we are molecules of emotions. You know, when I heard that, I'm like, that is so true. You know, we, we tend to be so busy and live in our heads that we actually forget what's going on inside our body. So as I say, make sure that you, if you're not journaling, explore why you're not journaling. Write about why you're not journaling. Write anyway. Um, if, you're, if you're really, really resistant, then 
put down in some words, like a couple of feeling states. The women that journal get the results. The women that resist the journaling for obviously from, from fe for fearful reasons, deep, deep subconsciously, stay stuck. So this is why I go on about it so much. But I hope by introducing the recovery of the inner child through um, through uh, pictures and things, that, that will help. So when you're feeling depressed, I want you to draw, like get a piece of paper or do it in your journal, draw what depressed feels like for you. I know when I was feeling so scared and down and depressed, one of the images that I that I drew at the time, and, and I must try and get it out, was, um, was this kind of half shell with a jagged edge and with my head just popping out the top. I, I felt like I lived my whole life kind of scared and popping out over the top of the shell. And then there was another one where I was screaming. I had like a big open mouth and I was like, uh, you know, like really angry and like, and I was like, somebody help me. Or I did another one. So, so again, it was very challenging for me and I, you know, I'm being vulnerable here and sharing. It was really challenging for me to feel my feelings. I know now when I look back, I was, I'd had a series of abusive relationships. I didn't know that they were abusive. I didn't know from work, from family, from uh, partners, you know, so there was a lot of projection being put upon me. So it was incredibly hard to separate all these tentacles, all that sticky stuff. It was like being stuck in a spider's web and trying to pick bits off me. So what we do is we do this in just tiny, tiny increments. You know, uh, the, 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 if you look at the foundation of what it means to be a human, it's it's connection to self. We, we look out there for the answers, but actually all the answers to everything lie within us. But there lies the challenge. If you've had projected onto you that there's something wrong with you, that's going to cause tremendous anxiety and fear and depression to the thought of going in there because you think that there's all bad and there isn't. I, I promise you that. That you are connecting to as much as you can, as best as you can. Just allow yourself to be open to the idea that you have a little you inside, a cute little innocent little you that has, has something that it wants to say to you and is scared and is frightened and, um, and has some needs that it needs. And it might just be just to, to go and have an ice cream. You know, it might be to go and sit in a bath and, and get get some uh, some salts or something. You know, I, I don't know what that's going to be. It might just be to get some coloring in pens and just some color in. So we're talking like a tiny little bite sized pieces. Now, there is going to be a perfectionist and a pusher and all those parts. And there's going to be your critic that's going to say, oh, well, that's frivolous and that's stupid. Just notice all these things and thank the critic. Thank the pusher. Thank the perfectionist. I want you to to. Um, the whole essence of this is to come together and accept who you are and all parts of you. So we're looking for you to accept the critic and thank the critic. The critic is all they're trying to do is to protect you. So that internal dialogue there, that internal voice, it might be like, yeah, Wendy, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what, what it was like for me. You're right. I don't know what it's like for you, but your critic does. And that's why it's trying to protect you. So you want to thank the critic for its work. You want to thank the perfectionist for trying to keep you doing everything so perfectly so you didn't get into trouble. So there was no backlash. You want to thank the people pleaser because you, you learned early on that you had to keep everybody happy to keep yourself safe. You want to thank all those parts because they're beautiful parts. Some are a little bit out of balance from others. And that's why we want to say to the, to the, the youngest part of us, that, you know, we are safe now to come up, to come out uh, in small doses, little by little becomes a lot. And, and try and do that through, through doodling and drawing. You could be in a meeting, you could be on the phone, you could be something. And I'm going to encourage you just that free with your right hand um, or whatever hand you use, but to engage the right hand part of your brain and see if that helps. So keep up the great work. Remember, the three daily basics are key. Journaling, meditation and your power shake. Um, they're going to feed you um, emotionally, um, spiritually, and physically. And that's, remember, we're, we're doing this whole body, whole person approach. So keep up the great work and bye. Thanks for listening to Heal Endometriosis Naturally with Wendy K. Laidlaw. And I hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and rate us. If you're interested in learning more, you can download your top five jumpstart tips at healendometriosisnaturally.com and jump on the VIP email list. Remember to keep you number one. The world needs a healthy you.